guys how are you doing today how have you been how is your life how is your family how is work how are you like your whole um, your general well-being I hope all is well with you how was your weekend how was the past week I hope you were winning I hope you were blessed and extremely favored by the Lord and of course I hope you went to church yesterday I you know I'll always ask you if you went to church I went to church by the grace of God you know it was an awesome service and we return all the glory to God and today I want to go ahead and you know talk about um, something that I hope will bless you today and the topic for today is God's love through mistakes so I'm going to say that one more time the topic for today is God's love through mistakes yes so um you know God is a good God and that's the truth I want you to know today that God is a good God his plans for you are plans of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope you know he he has good thoughts for you he has good plans for you and even though God has good thoughts and good plans for us, you know, sometimes we fall out of line of his plans and his thoughts for us. And when we do that, you know, by way of making mistakes, there are repercussions, you know, when we make mistakes, you know, sometimes there are consequences that come with that mistake. And, you know, I've heard people say in the past, like when you're suffering the consequence of a mistake or, you know, the consequences of something you did that wasn't right. I've heard people say that God is punishing you. Well, I don't know about that. What I know is that God is good and everything that God does, everything is good. And, you know, that brings me, you know, to talk more about the, you know, the topic for today. Yes, like I said, God, you know, and yes, like I said, we make mistakes. But the thing I've seen about God and I know about God is even in our mistakes, he's making provision for us to come out of it. You know, even though those mistake, mistakes come with consequences, God is always looking for a way to restore us and, you know, bring us back to to the right part with him, you know, to bring us out of that suffering or pain or whatever was caused by the mistakes that we made. And I want to read a very popular story in the Bible, and that's the story of the prodigal son. And I'm going to read. It's a long read. So I'm going to try to just, um, okay, let me give you the back story. So it was about a man who had two sons, and one of the sons said, oh, um, you know, give me my part and my portion of the inheritance. I want to live by myself. I want to do my own thing. And the father obliged him. And of course, he went and spent his money, you know, on all kinds of living and all kinds of stuff. And he ran out of funds and had to go uh, work with some people in the land. And he was so broke and things were so bad that he began to eat with the pigs. That's how bad that decision led him down a downward spiral and you know he said eating with the pigs and he said to himself I'm going to read um, from verse 17 of Luke chapter 15 and it says I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I am not worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants okay so what was his motivation for going back home it wasn't really because he was sorry his motivation for going back home was he was hungry. The brother was hungry. I'm going to read verse 17 just to buttress what I just said. In verse 17, he said, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. So he was not really so, like sorry or repentant for the things that he did. He was just hungry. And you know, for that reason, he went back home. You know, and he rehearsed his whole speech. I'm going to tell my father, I've sinned against you. But you know, this is what I love the most about this verse. I'm going to read verse 20 and it says, And when he arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 
And the son said unto the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the father calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. What I love is the fact that the father was outside scanning the horizon looking for his son. Because the scripture says when the son was a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran towards him. This is an earthly father. How much more your heavenly father? It doesn't matter the mistakes or whatever, the error that you've made. I want you to see the Father's heart of love even in that situation. God is scanning the horizon, looking out for you, waiting for you to come back because he has made provision to restore you to everything you've lost. He has made provision to make your life better, to heal the broken heart, to restore you to the level that you were and even better. That's the Father's heart. Even in your mistakes, I want you to see the Father's love and compassion for you. Even through any mistake or any error that you have made, His heart is to restore you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Still talking about the heart of the Father for us, even when we make mistakes. I want to talk about another story that I really love. And it's another popular one. It's one about David and Bathsheba and Uriah. So, backstory. David became king and he saw this beautiful woman, Bathsheba, and he fell in love with her, you know, whatever the case may be. He lost it after her, I don't know. He just wanted her. And he found that she was married to one of, you know, his um, soldier men, Uriah. So he plotted with Joab, his commander-in-chief, to put Uriah at the forefront of battle so that Uriah would die so that he would take Bathsheba as his wife. And when he did, I mean, that's, that's mean, like that's mean, mean, mean. And when he did that, God sent Nathan the prophet to him. And you know, gave him a little riddle. So oh, there's a rich guy who had lots of cattle. And you know, there was this poor guy that had only one. And the rich guy took the poor guy's cat, um, lamb and killed it. What should be done to that rich guy? And David, you know, oh, that rich guy should be killed. Who is he? I'll deal with him. And Nathan was like, you're the one. So David became very sorry. And you know, I want us to see what God said to David. Even though David just killed a guy, this is what God said to him. I'm reading the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12, and I just want to read verse 7 and 8. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in his sight? I'm going to stop there. So God came to David and was like, I gave you all these things. If you wanted another wife, I could have given you, instead of you killing a man. What a heart. Like, how many of us would do that to our kids? When our kids wrong us, we would come and say, or let's say our kids, God forbid, or somebody stole from you. Would you go to the person and say, oh, if you wanted, why didn't you tell me I could have given you? No, we would, we would be out for blood. Like, we would be vengeful. But God is saying to David, if you wanted more, I would have given you. I just saw that the, the, the heart of God through that statement, that God loves us passionately and he loves us unconditionally and irrevocably like god is not going to revoke his love for us because we did something stupid and turned away instead he would always find a way to come to us to find a way to reconcile us back to him i mean god didn't need to send nathan to david to tell david oh you did this god could have just took him out like you're done that's it next <laughs> but god didn't do that God sent Nathan to him to talk to him so that through that conversation, David will repent and God will make a way of escape for him, you know, to be restored. Praise the Lord. I, God is amazing. 
What happened eventually was Bathsheba got pregnant. You know, she lost the baby, but God restored and gave David another son called Solomon. And of course we know Solomon was like the wisest man that has ever lived and the richest man that has ever lived till date. Look at the heart of God to restore David even after a mistake. You know, I just found out something recently. David and Bathsheba decided to name their son Solomon, but God had a special name for the son. When David and Bathsheba had their, their child, God sent Nathan again to them. This is what he says in verse 25 of that same chapter. And I'll be reading that in the easy translation. And the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell them that they should call him Jedediah. That was because the Lord loved him. Wow. You mean after everything David did, God sent the prophet. After, of course, he sent him to tell him what he did was wrong. He sent him back to say, I love the son. This is a boy that was born out of adultery and murder. Yet God says, call him Jedediah because I love him. Wow. Like my mind is so blown by the love of God towards us. And I just want to encourage you. Look, God loves you even through that mistake. I want you to see his heart of love and his heart to restore you. His heart to make a way for you. You know, another story is coming to my mind real quick. The story of Adam and Eve. When they made a mistake and they ate of the tree of good and evil that God asked them not to eat of. The Bible says that their eyes were open and they realized that they were naked and they were ashamed. So they went and they sewed themselves clothes out of fig, fig leaves. Of course, fig leaves, what would they do? They would dry up in a season. But when God came to them, the scripture says that God made clothes for them out of skin, animal skin. They just sinned against God. And, you know, but God still cared about their well-being. God knew that oh, this people they don't even know anything they're sewing clothes for themselves out of figs what's that gonna do and God clothed them God wants to clothe you God wants to provide for you God wants to make a way for you yes you made a mistake yes you sinned yes you disobeyed God but I want to tell you today that God wants to show you his heart of love even through that error and through that mistake God wants to supply your needs according to his riches and glory even through that mistake, his heart and his thoughts for you are good. Take it and believe it because that is what it is. Praise the Lord. I mean, I just preached myself happy. Knowing that no matter what I do, God's love and his heart for me will never change. That just gives me a hope and that just gives me faith to keep on loving the Lord and keep on serving him to the best of my ability. God is not out to get you. God is not out to make you suffer. God is not out to punish you. He's out to love you and to restore you as his child. Hallelujah. Man, it's taking so long and I don't want to keep talking because I try to keep this um, Monday motivations as brief as possible, but I want you to go into the week knowing God's heart for you through your mistakes so don't be afraid no matter the traps that the enemy sets for you go into the week confident that you have a loving father whose heart and thoughts towards you will never change it will continually remain that of love and restoration in the name of Jesus wow I can't wait to share again with you next week I know this is going to be an awesome and a great week for you don't forget to subscribe you know and hit the notification bell so you will get notifications every time a new video is uploaded and please share 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 the world has heard so much about a God that is wicked and wants to punish them people need to know that God loves them unconditionally so don't forget to share 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 follow me on my social media at Avanti Uzo and you know keep winning this is gonna be an awesome week bye for now